Hi everyone, you caught me mid-battle here. Today, as you've probably figured out, we're gonna talk about Pokemon Shield, specifically. So, spoilers ahead, if you don't want to know anything about this game and you've not played it yet, uh, perhaps stop watching now, because otherwise you are going to be disappointed. So let me just finish up this battle here. I'm gonna give you my thoughts today on, well, I don't want to say accessibility per se, because that's such a broad ranging topic, but I am going to talk a little bit today about, actually I'm going to just try to run from this guy if I can. Yeah. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what I feel uh, the developers at Game Freak could have done better in terms of considerations for the blind, visually impaired, low vision, whatever you want to call us. Um, so right now, spoilers again, I'm in the wild area which is this big sprawling area, basically, where you can catch all kinds of Pokemon and where the weather changes and it's super fun. Um, and I had really high expectations about this game because this was the first totally new Pokemon game that I could play on launch, not counting Let's Go Pikachu, which was basically just yellow. Um, I've been waiting for this for a long time because I'm too blind to use the handheld stuff. Um, I posted about this on Reddit actually last year and everyone was like, oh, why didn't you just hack your GameCube for the older versions? And like, you know, I was a little kid when all that came out, so I didn't know how to do that. I didn't have the resources for any of that. So now I'm happy about this. Um, and I'm going to come to one of the first things that I really dislike about this game in terms of considerations for the blind and visually impaired, and that is these sparkly bits here. Now, I miss these constantly. Um, and what these are, are items. <laughs> Some of them really important items. But I'll show you, when you run, you kick up dirt. And for someone who's low vision like myself, it's really hard to sometimes see the difference between kicked up dirt and these little sparkly bits. In the old Pokemon games, um, all of the items were visible in terms of, like, they looked like Pokeballs, basically. I wonder if I can find one just running around in here. And they still do have items that look like Pokeballs here, but a lot of them also just appear as sparkles on the ground, which is not helpful for someone like me. Um, another thing that I find to be really frustrating is if I do this, so basically just walk into a wall, um, I have no sort of physical or audible response that I'm walking into a wall. So there's nothing there to tell me that what I'm doing is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Whereas in the older Pokemon games, if you walked into a wall, it kind of made a bumping noise, and I think sometimes it even like physically reacted. Um, so I tried to check the options to see if there was anything in here in terms of that. I have skip movies, show nicknames, casual controls, which they said is to make it easier to play with one hand, um, which is an accessibility feature, but not for the visually impaired. Uh, auto save, horizontal camera controls, other gyroscope nicknames, send boxes, battle style, battle effects. Uh, you can turn off battle effects, which I think might be good. Um, uh, which might be nice uh, for people with kind of sensory issues. But otherwise, um, there's nothing here about anything else related to accessibility or sounds or anything. So there are some audio cues. For example, when I ran through the when I run through the grass, it does sort of tell me that I'm in the grass audibly, but uh, and you know, when you, when you meet a Pokemon, of course, there's sounds and, and whatnot. Um, and they have these little things above their heads. But then there's also the part that I wanted to demonstrate, which was, or is, something that I find happening to me quite a lot in newer games. And when I say newer games, I mean games from the past 20 years. Because I'm an old lady. Uh, let me just quickly go this way. And actually, first I'm going to visit a Pokemon Center so I can 
so I can heal myself up because I've been getting my butt kicked. And when you guys see my party, you'll probably see why I've been getting my butt kicked, but don't judge me. <laughs> Yes, so I also need to pop by the shop after I'm done here, but so one problem I especially noticed in this part of town was that you have these houses here and like I'm trying to play with my camera so that I'd be able to move better and see more, but I can't. So in all the Pokemon games, you have houses that you can kind of go in and out of and talk to people, but it's really hard for me to figure out where the stairs are, and it's also really hard for me to figure out, like, if there's houses or not. For example, or if there's a place I can go for, or not. For example, down this way, I only realized, I've been playing this game for, how long? Wait, I'll just save. Yeah, I've been playing this game for 12 and a half hours. And only an hour ago did I realize I could go down these stairs. <laughs> because I, and there were items down here. Because it's it's just not marked well. Um, and it's really easy for me to miss this opening with all of the other kind of visual blur in the background. Um, and then the cave levels, I can show you those. They are easier in one way than they were on the Game Boy games, for example. Um, just because the graphics are, are better, so now there's, you know, more opportunities to kind of play with them. But even still here in the caves, it's really hard for me to kind of figure out what is what. I mean, it is, it is... One thing that's bad for me is I've been really excited for a long time to play this game on a larger screen because the handheld screens are too small, but now I'm playing on such a large screen, and this is a personal problem, I'm playing on such a large screen that I can't read any of that without, like, doing that, which is not the best thing for me. Um, I have like other screens in the house and I've been thinking, I said this in my previous video about Let's Go Pikachu, that I think um, I just need to move my console to my daughter's TV, which is I think 22 inches or something. So it's, it's much more reasonable, but the animations are really cool. Like, <laughs> I can just imagine how awesome this would have been if I would have played this when I was nine. Yeah. There is like a, in the cave, an initial... There is an initial bump when you walk into stuff in the cave. I didn't notice it outside, but in the cave, it's like, there is a small bump, but there's no, there's nothing physical. It's all audible. So if you miss it somehow when you're listening, that's it. And then again, there's this bit here where it's like, there's stuff on the ground. I can't quite tell what it is. Is it sparkly bits? Is it just what I'm kicking up or is it a Pokemon? Um, so that could be much clearer, I think. There's a lot more that could have been done um, in terms of just making it make sense visually. Uh, yeah, so here's what I was talking about before. In the old Pokemon games, uh, every item basically was this. So if you see this on the ground, you know that it's an item or something of value. Um, and I don't understand why there can't just be an option to have every item appear like this. I understand the logic that it's probably, you know, hunting or whatever, but you're still going to be hunting for these anyway. And this is so much easier for me. Oh, it's a TM. It's so much easier for me to, to notice that and not confuse that with something else than it is for me to notice um, some sparkles on the ground, but, you know, maybe that's something they could fix with, like, an update or some DLC, like, I would happily pay for some kind of extension that makes items just appear as Pokeballs, um, and I know a lot of people are gonna hear me, oh my god, there's just a field of pseudo uh, a lot of people are gonna hear me say that and think, you know, I'm not good at video games, and you're right, I'm not very good at video games, but I also, um, want basically just a fair shot at, at figuring things out. Yeah, so for example, if I walk into this fence, nothing happens. I could just be doing this all day and my character sort of slides a little bit, but that's it. So that's not very helpful again if you're, if you're low vision. I do like the world. It's very pretty. 
Um, oh, yeah, and here's, again, I, I've walked over this bridge, like, f five or six times, and there's still stuff on it that I didn't catch, just because the sparkly bits are so easy for me to miss. Why do it that way? Yeah, and then there's also the heat that comes out from the from the vents, which is easy to mistake for something else as well. There's just a lot going on um, visually, and this is not exclusive to the Pokemon game. So I hope no one or the Pokemon franchise, like I hope no one seeing this thinks I'm just being ungrateful or rude or whatever. But there's just so much visually going on. Then there's this hotel where you can stay at. Can I actually stay here if I'm not battling in the thing? Can I go upstairs? Oh, wow. I didn't even realize I could do this. I wonder if I'm like getting ahead of myself. I didn't even realize I could just go into people's hotel rooms. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> I noticed something shiny on the ground while I was walking in the wild area. So I went to investigate. Guess what I found? Star pieces. Great. Oh, he gave me a star piece. Thanks. I wish this is how real life worked. Like you just walked into random strangers' hotel rooms and they would give you things. What do these people have to say? I've come to watch the matches. They were a good band. Uh, oh, I clicked on the wrong person twice. Oops. This is an empty room, I think. Yeah, this looks empty. Yeah, there was nothing there. I think. I hope. How far does this go? Oh, just to here. Another complaint I had about this game, which is sort of a minor thing, as an old person, uh, I found the tutorial mode in the beginning to be very, very long. <laughs> um, I otherwise so far like this game, but just getting started felt like it took longer than it needed to. I think it was like 45 minutes before I could actually start doing anything, which was a bit annoying. Another thing I almost completely ran by there, and then I clicked on it. It was a polka doll, but I would have missed it completely. Oh, and there's another item. It's just really, like... If they could just make the music change, or... Like, something that when you were near an item, you had some indication, if you were a low-vision person, that you're near an item. Like, something. This menu is really good. Like, this menu is clear, and it makes sense. Um, so that's one plus, that the menu is easy to follow and I don't, I don't have any trouble knowing what's going on in terms of the menu. Um, but one thing I would like to do is go back in here. Let me fly back here, because I think I can. So in this game also, you just have a flying taxi, you don't actually have like an HM. Which is sad, because I kind of liked having HM slaves, but it doesn't seem like that's a thing you need here so much. Um, but I spend a lot of my time in this wild area, it's sort of like the closest thing I can get to like how I would live my life if I would be a person in the Pokemon world, just like hanging out in a forest collecting all the mons. That makes me sound kind of sad, I guess, doesn't it? I don't know. But... The other thing um, that I think could be better in terms of... Oh yeah, wait. Is that Sparkles? Yeah. Yeah. So, the other thing I think that could be better in terms of accessibility is that in the water here, there are these little like whirlpools that indicate there's a Pokemon and you click A and you put your line out but when you basically just wait for the exclamation point to come and then you click on it 
but it's really easy to miss those little whirlpools um, if you're not being careful. So there's just a whole lot that you can really kind of easily miss, in my opinion, that I don't think, I don't really think the developers thought about, um, which is unfortunate because when I made my post on Reddit last year about how happy I was, uh, there were a lot of other blind people commenting saying how happy they were and, you know, and so on, but also, also how the changes in Let's Go compared to the console games kind of left them feel betrayed, for lack of a better word. Like I said before about the noise when you bump into the wrong place and so on. Okay, that's my first Ultra Ball. What is happening over here? Yeah, and so like, but then you still get these actual items that look like that, and I don't understand. I don't understand why this is so hard. Oh yeah, and then you kind of get up these hills, and then you don't realize that you're up a hill until you're there. Or at least I don't, because I'm blind. And then the camera does this a lot when I'm trying to not do this. There we go. Wait, hang on. There. The camera controls could be a little bit better, but I think I can change these in the settings if I want to. I don't know to what extent. I haven't played with it much. I haven't seen you before. You're cute. So before I start battling this, um, I think I hit on all the big points that I wanted to hit on. Um, it's hard for me to talk about the one-handed stuff because I'm not one-handed, but I do think there are some pretty big visual things that take away from the gameplay experience, at least for me, that sometimes make the game a little bit tedious and that I wish that they could fix with an update or hopefully at the very least fix in the newer games. There just needs to be more visual, or I'm sorry, there needs to be more audio and uh, uh, vibrating cues in order for things to make sense. Because um, otherwise you're gonna just have people wasting their time, people paranoid that they missed something, or people actually missing something, which again is not nice and not something you want. Games are supposed to be challenging to an extent, but uh, challenging to an extent, but also fun. And if people aren't having fun, then they're not gonna keep playing. Um, for Pokemon, I guess they could do pretty much anything and I think people like me would still buy it, which is unfortunate because I, I like to think that I have more, uh, I like to think that I have more willpower than that and that I'm not a hypocrite and that if something is actually bad that I won't buy it, <laughs> but this isn't bad. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just, it gets tedious. So thank you for watching. If you have any other questions about accessibility, um, in games, uh, definitely check out the website gameaccessibilityguidelines.com. It's a resource for developers, but I think it's also super good for just people curious about the topic of accessibility anyway. Um, and of course you can always send me a message. I get a lot of messages about accessibility, uh, and I try to answer as many as I can, but for example, if you want me to play test your game, I really don't have time for that unless you are paying. But if you have just general questions, definitely hit me up. I'll do my best to answer. Thank you so much. Bye.